In this presentation, we will work a tax preparation problem number 2.1. This is going to be the data entry. We're going to enter this information into the tax forms, into the tax software, which we will then verify with a formula with the use of Excel in a future presentation. Here is the tax software we will be using and the tax forms. Here's going to be the 1040. We have some of the basic information in here now. We're going to verify this as we look through the information that will be provided. If you have access to the inf information provided that will help us to work through this, you should have an answer tab, which will give you the answer to it. The working files, which will give you information that you can put the data input in, including forms that you can fill out if, as an, an Excel worksheet that you can fill out. And then we have the actual data, such as the W-2s and 1099s, which will be in this document. Now we'll take a look at the forms that will be provided. So the W-2s and whatnot are going to be in this Excel sheet. We're going to have the mock W-2 uh, form so we can see the data input within it. I'm going to say there's no retirement plan, by the way. And then we're going to scroll down. We have a second one. This one has a different name. Therefore, our assumption is that we would have a married filing joint return so even if this was not a continuing a continuing return and all we had was the documentation say we just picked it up in, in our in the cpa office and started to work on it we'd probably assume well this probably married filing joint what other information do we have we've got the 1099 for the interest this is the actual form it might be something that would be shorter that just has basically box one 150 in uh, the box one for the 1099 interest we're going to say they were did have health insurance of some kind for the year and they also had a dependent now note the dependent is something we're going to need more information on usually a new client will provide that or we might have the prior year tax return which will of course have that for us what do we need for the dependent we're going to need and they might have other documentations if they went to a school that qualifies for uh child care type of stuff then we might have documentation that would have the child's possibly social security number and date of birth and what and that or at least the social security name on it but obviously we're going to need the name of the child we're going to need the relationship of the child usually uh, a child son or daughter and we're going to need the date of birth for the child because that's going to help us to determine whether or not they're going to qualify for a child tax credit and and then we could have other information in terms of did did the child uh, go to uh, care that might be something that we have a credit for we'll talk about that in the future right now our questions are uh, does the child qualify as a dependent for it and then we're thinking about basically the child tax credit right now because that's that's just related to it we'll talk more about credits in future presentations but anytime you see a, a child you would think okay do they qualify for the child tax credit and if it's a dependent that does not qualify for the child tax credit then you'd be thinking about the other dependent credit also note that with married filing joint the child doesn't have any change in terms of the filing status because they're married filing joint which is already already the best if they were single and you saw a child uh, then you'd be thinking well is it possible that they're not single they're going to be head of household filing status so just some, some things to keep in mind with a dependent we're going to go back up top we're going to enter this uh, in in place just like we did in the past so we're going to go back to our data entry worksheet we'll start off with uh the w2 information let's actually let's look at the data input for the filing status if you had a new return married filing joint we're going to say we would put in the husband and wife information. We have uh, the social security number provided by the W-2s typically. Then we're gonna, we, we're gonna have to ask them about their occupation and the date of birth. Make sure that we have those two things. The date of birth may not have an effect on the tax calculation, but it could if they're older. Information that we need uh, in either case by the, end of the, by the end of the process here. We have the same for the spouse information. That gives us the top part of our form. Let's go back to our forms where we have the married filing joint that's very important we have the names up top we got the social security up top we can get those from the w-2 we've got the address which we can typically get from the w-2 no other adjustments up top here with regards to uh, someone else claiming them as a dependent or being older than 65 or blind and then we have the dependent information now uh, it's probably the one of the first things you'll do is you could enter the dependent information you have questions now should i enter you know what order should i be putting these things in place in it's kind of nice if you have the dependent information you might want to do that right off the bat and make sure that you you have basically the top of this form filled out properly so we can do that we can go back to the data entry and we're looking for uh the dependent so i'm going to say that we want a dependent it's going to be screen two in lercert and let's scroll down and pick up the dependent so i'm going to say that we had 
Linda as the dependent. So I'm going to say Linda Jones. So let's say Linda. Hopefully I spell it right. You want to spell it right? We need the date of birth. Got to have that because it's going to be something that's really important in terms of the child tax credit for 1615041615. If you don't have it, then you want to put something that if you know they're going to qualify for the tax credit, you put it in your in your open item sheet and then you push forward and put in a date so that you can do a preliminary calculation so that you can at least push forward with it. You don't just stop there, put something in there, mark it down in the open items and get all the questions you can by populating everything you can as you go. Same with the social security number. You're going to need it. I, I don't have one here. And if I didn't have it, I would then ask them. I'd put it in the open items. I'd, I'd say uh, Linda's social security number is what we need but i'm not going to stop there i'm not going to let that stop us i'm going to just keep going forward and and so i can basically do as much as possible and, and get all the questions down as possible rather than calling and calling back and forth as as we go so then we're going to say that's going to be the daughter and that's going to be 12 and we have the child living with the taxpayer when applicable uh for the child tax credit so everything looks good here. So if I go back up to the forms, then we're going to have the Linda's uh, pop up here, social security number, daughter, child tax credit. That's what we would expect to, to be here. Now, what we would expect then is on page two. Also, that child tax credit will appear on page two. We don't have any income yet, so it's not there at this point. But we're going to expect once we enter the income for the child tax credit to be right there. So let's take a look at the, the wages now. Now we can start with the wages. That's going to be in uh, line one should change with the wages. And the other thing that's going to change is going to be on line two, number 17, as we enter the W-2 information. So I'll do this a little bit more quickly. We've done this a few times in the past. We're going to go back up top. W-2, we've got the 46,000, the 4,100. So I'm going to go back over. We're going to go to our data. We're going to go to the income, W-2. I'm just going to call it job one to start off with. This is going to be the husband's. Therefore, we're not going to select the spouse. And we said that the amounts were 46,400. So four, so we got 46,000 and 4100. And then I just verify this number, 2852 and 667. So I'm going to say, all right, does that tie out? We have the 2852 and the 667. That looks good. Then I'm going to go to W2 number two. This is for Anne. So that's going to be the spouse. We're going to say add job two. This is going to be for the spouse. So I'll, I'll, I'll check that off here. The amounts then being the 30,000 and the 2350. So 30,000 and the 2350. Double checking the 1860 and the 435. So there's the 1860 and the 435. So if we then go back to the forms up top, taking a look at the forms we have the combination of those two now at the 76,000 that follows all the way down to the adjusted gross income no adjustments there we have the stand the standard deduction at the 24,400 given their married filing joint then the taxable income being the 51,600 the tax that would then be calculated on it on page two go into page two is that 5,807 and then we have the child tax credit now being there, 2000 2000 for the child tax credit. We'll talk more about the child tax credit verifications for it, but uh, you, you got to be aware of it. And anytime you think about a dependent, a child, that's the first thing that's going to pop to mind. That's one of the big uh, items. So I uh, want that there. And then we have uh, the subtotal at 3807 And just note how big a credit is. It's not a deduction. Because if it was a deduction, it would be on the first page and it would, you'd only get a portion of it. If it was a $2,000 deduction, in other words, you'd only get a portion based on the tax rate. A credit, a $2,000 credit, took the whole tax liability down by $2,000. So that's a huge credit. So then we have the, the total tax and then we have the amount withheld, which is the $6,450 from the two tax returns. That gives us then our, our total payments and our refund which is the difference between these two up top is the 2,643. Let's see what else we have. So if we go back over here, we said we put in the second W-2, then we have the interest. So here's our, our 1099 for the INT. It's typically just going to have box one on it if it's a simple interest. If you have any other boxes checked off, you can take a look at the instructions for them. 
which are on the side and and uh, get into questions on that such as uh, interest that's that's uh, not taxable tax exempt interest and we'll talk more about that in future presentations so we're going to go back up top we're going to go to the forms we're going to go to the income and we're going to go to the interest and by the way if i if i go back to the forms let's think about what line that's going to be on page one i would assume interest is in the income section in uh 2a i could jump to it from the form which is very useful jumping to it and i want to go to the int there's my 1099 int that makes me feel like i'm in the right spot then i'm going to say that this is going to be for bank one bank one and we're going to say that this was for 150 so we're going to say 150 back to the forms let's see that adjustment so no change to the wages change to the interest there's the 150 that will increase the taxable wages to the 76 150 adjusted gross income the same no change to the standard deduction because it, it's, it is what it is for married filing joint that brings the taxable income to the 51,750 tax now calculated on that amount at 5,825 has changed no change to the child tax credit 2,000 remains then the subtotal here 3832 the total tax 3000 uh 3825 then the withholding 6450 the difference between those two given our refund at uh, 2625 if we go back to our worksheet let's see if there's anything else that will be added we have the dependent that looks good so we're gonna we're gonna ask any questions at this point in time and then we we would want to basically verify this number by looking at the diagnostics to see if there's any critical diagnostics that we have missed and then analysis then next time we're going to enter this information into the excel worksheet and double check basically the numbers through the calculation on a formula basis